Okay, welcome back. We were discussing the concept of multiplexers and we move forward now. We have again the 8 cross 1 multiplexers which behave the same way as 4 cross 1 or 2 cross 1. It's only a question of having more selection lines. In the 8 cross 1 multiplexer, the number of selection lines that we would have would be 3. So shown here is a 16 cross 1 multiplexer. Again, the controls in this case are A, B, C, D and bus architecture demands that we generate their complements as well. So shown here are A, A complement, B, B complement, C, C complement and D, D complement. So these control lines are also known as data selector as the output bit that we see finally in the OR gate depends upon which input data is selected. So 16 cross 1 multiplexer in this case only one data bit is transmitted which depends upon the value of the control that is ABCD. So ABCD would go from 0 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 1. 16 cross 1 multiplexer would run something like this. If 1 1 1 1 then the output would have the data input 15 for a ABCD combination of 0, 0, 1, 0, we would have a y equal to d1. Since we consider d0 to be the base, so therefore 0, 0, 1, 0 would be d1. We have in concept what are known as nibble multiplexers. So in nibble multiplexers, we process typically 4 bits at a time. So the figure here shows OR gates having bubbles at the input. Now, when a NOT gate is put after OR gate, it is known as NOR gate. But if the NOT gate is put at the input of OR gate, it is known as bubbled OR gate. This is a typical syntax in digital electronics. So till the time we have the control signal here as select shown as select till the time the select is having 0 select line is also digital hence it will have only two values either 0 or 1 when select line is 0 then output will be a3 a2 a1 and a0 whereas when select line becomes 1 then we see that the output y3, y2, y1, y0 will be b3, b2, b1, b0. So there is a concept of known as multiplexer tree or mux trees. Many a time we do not have a multiplexer of the size that we require. At that point of time, since multiplexers are modular in nature, therefore two or more multiplexers can be combined to form a multiplexer with large number of inputs. This resulting configuration arising out of having two or more multiplexers working in tandem to process larger number of inputs is called MUX tree. And there are two ways how to combine multiplexers into a MUX tree. One thing is to have an OR gate at the output of all the multiplexers. And the other thing is to have a multiplexer at the end of all the multiplexers. We will consider both the cases and see how the concept of MUX tree works. In this figure that is shown over here, we have the enable or the strobe control line acting as a selection line. We are trying to make 8 cross 1 multiplexer using 2 4 cross 1 multiplexer. That is, we have only two small 4 cross 1 multiplexers which we reconfigure to act as 8 cross 1 multiplexer in tandem. So, for 4 cross 1 multiplexer, you would see that only two selection lines are available. But in order to have 8 cross 1 multiplexer, we need three selection lines. So in this case, we what the 
engineers have done is they are using the enable or the strobe at control line as the additional selection line. So, this is one IC. This IC ha is a dual IC of 4 cross 1 multiplexer and in this case we have the strobe line or the enable line allowing us to choose either the top multiplexer or the bottom multiplexer. So, till the time we have the selection lines as S2, S1 and S0 and Y is the output. The selection lines are shown over here. So, till the time this S2 is 0, then the top multiplexer gets selected and when S2 goes 1, then the bottom multiplexer gets selected. So, for a combination of 8 inputs, typically there would be 3 variables as per digital logic and the variables here act as selection lines and they are S2, S1 and S0. The 8 combinations are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1, 1. This is trivial and we all know how digital logic works. So, in this case S2 is helping us not controlling the two 4 cross 1 multiplexers not only as enabler strobe but also as a selection line. So, for S2, S1, S0 being 0, 0, 0, the top multiplexer gets selected and the output that we have is X0. For 0, 0, 1, it is X1 and as we go for 0, 1, 1, we have X3. Now, the top multiplexer combination that is the whole data is taken care of. So, we switch to the bottom 4 cross 1 multiplexer by changing S2 to 1. So, again for S2 equal to 1, S1 and S0 will have 4 combinations that is S2 is fixed at 1. So, S1 and S0 will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1 and we can see that for combination 0, 0, 0 we have X0, 0, 0, 1, X1, 0, 1, 0, X2, 0, 1, 1, X3, 1, 0, 0, X4. Likewise, we go forward and we finally we find for 1, 1, 1 we have X7 as the output. So, typically we have been successful in realizing a 8 cross 1 multiplexer by using two smaller 4 cross 1 multiplexers. The point to note again if we revert back to the previous slide is that output of both the multiplexers is fed into an OR gate. So, OR gate for one combination for S2 being 0, we will find that the top multiplexer will give out data whereas, the bottom multiplexer output would be 0. So, data plus 0 in an OR gate will give you data. Likewise, when S2 goes 1, then the top multiplexer output gets locked at 0 and bottom multiplexer data is routed to the OR gate. So, again 0 plus data would give you the data and hence in this case a larger 8 cross 1 multiplexer has been realized using two smaller 4 cross 1 multiplexers and an OR gate. Moving forward, the OR gate could be replaced, the OR gate could be replaced by a smaller 2 cross 1 multiplexer. Here is how. We choose in this case again, we choose the multiplexer size as 4 cross 1 and the second one also as 4 cross 1 and we replace the OR gate with a 2 cross 1 multiplexer. So, in this case again a combination of S0 and S1 in multiplexer 
0 and multiplexer 1 will give you a particular set of data as input to multiplexer 2 that is 2 cross 1 multiplexer. Now, 2 cross 1 multiplexer has a singular selection line S2 in this case and S2 when 0 will allow the input of mux 0 to its output and S2 when 1 will allow the in output of mux 1 which is its input to the output. So, S2 0 top multiplexer, S2 1 bottom multiplexer goes. So, at a given point of time in the 2 cross 1 multiplexer only data from one of the multiplexers either the top or the bottom is routed to the output. The truth table still remains the same and we find that typically till the time the strobe signal remains at 0 the multiplexers work and when it goes 1 they get inhibited irrespective of combination of S2, S1 and S0 and combination again 4 cross 1, 4 cross 1 fed into 2 cross 1 and we get the combination as 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0 and triple 1 and likewise whatever is the input combination that particular output is sourced to the output right. So, moving forward we can also see that multiplexers can be used to implement a particular boolean function. We can generate a boolean function through that. For example, if we require a summation of for in order for k map also for if we require the multiplexer to generate generate a certain boolean function, we can use it to generate the same. In this case, suppose 1, 2, 4, 5, 7 is required, so only those inputs are fed with VCC that is the high value and rest of the inputs are fixed to connected to the ground. So, whatever combination we require, we have three selection lines since there is a 8 cross 1 multiplexer, hence it has three selection lines and that those three selection lines can be used to get or source data of that particular input to the output. So, likewise for another example is provided over here and moving forward what we can see again is a combination of use of OR gate along with strobe and low enable for the output. So, the whole of internet has many problems given to you and you may do well to access internet sites and practice the same. So, moving forward what are the applications of multiplexer? One of the foremost applications of multiplexer is routing of data. Routing of data from several sources to one particular destination. In computers we look at the hardware and we generally control whatever data is there via software in a computer. So, we understand that there is a hard disk. We also understand that there is a memory which is volatile and we want to save this particular data on a permanent basis. Then we access via software in the computer certain areas which are non-volatile in nature. Now, that is the software portion. Suppose, for example, you have some data that you uh, maybe copy onto your desktop. Later on, you want to store that particular data in within the hard disk of your computer at a one particular place. Suppose your uh, hard disk is partitioned. Then what really happens? How is the data transferred to that particular place? For example, maybe your hard disk is partitioned into C, D, E, F four partitions. We all know that the C partition is for the software for the operating system. However, we need to transfer the data to some particular point in the computer that is achieved using multiplexers. 
we know that we have to route this data from our desktop to a particular position or destination or memory location. So, multiplexers are used. Just imagine in order to uh, uh, just, just imagine the astronomical sums of wires or connections that would have required had there been no multiplexers. In order to transfer one bit, you would have one wire to transfer or maybe one particular port or one particular connection to transfer one bit. A typical movie download that you have runs into gigabytes nowadays. So, you can understand the problem of the situation, the gravity of the situation if I may use that having so many wires within your computer would not allow you to troubleshoot when required. Hence, multiplexing is the way out that allows us to use, does not allow us to keep data to be idle. We are using the same hardware to transfer data maybe from desktop to your D drive or from D drive to your E drive or moving around data maybe on a USB stick, maybe you want to upload something on the internet. Every time we have address buses and data buses and data buses are multiplexed. So, another application of multiplexer is the logic function generator. L multiplexers can be used to implement logic functions in SOP form that is a sum of products form directly from a truth table without the need for simplification. This is hardware solution to a logical problem. We also have KMAP, we have associative laws, distributive laws, but then if you want to solve it in a much faster fashion with actual output in real time, then using the multiplexer is the solution. The logic variables that are used as the select inputs, selection inputs and each data input is connected permanently to either a high value or low value. In the previous case, we had high values for 1, 2, 4, 7, but for 0, 3, 5, 6, we did not have a value. So, those terminals are to be connected to the low, that is the ground connection, and for 1, 2, 4, 7, they are to be connected to the high values, that is plus 5 VCC values. So, that is one can generate logic function as and when required with the help of a multiplexer. Another thing that we have not seen, the younger generation has not seen is the existence of parallel to serial converters because by the time you have been born and you have, uh, have studied, you have only seen USB ports, universal serial bus ports. But previously, the first port that came into existence was a serial port and parallel port allowed us to transmit data in a parallel fashion and it became a faster port. Later on, all these ports were joined together and we got what were known as USB ports. So, there are certain, still certain digital systems, archaic, they are old systems, but they handle a lot of power and so therefore, they cannot be replaced as of now. So, these systems process data in a parallel form and take a less time compared to serial processing. In order to transmit information over long distances, the parallel arrangement is not desirable since it requires large number of transmission lines and therefore, data in a parallel form is converted to serial form using a multiplexer. Trans having a single transmission line or data bus, maintaining it is much easier compared to if we have parallel lines. Typical parallel lines would be 25 in nature, 25 pins. So, having 25 lines transmission over kilometers is somewhat impractical and hence the need for serial transmission. So, in this case, the multiplexer calls into play and parallel data processing can be converted into slightly inefficient but more practical serial fashion. So, Whenever we have a multiplexer, we also have a demultiplexer. This demultiplexer is a complement of multiplexer 
and this demultiplexer allows us to have or transmit one particular input signal into many memory locations that we choose again with the help of selection lines. So basically it is the complement of multiplexers. Demultiplexers and multiplexers are used in tandem to ensure that data integrity from one point to another is maintained. So demultiplexer typically means DMUX is its acronym. DMUX means one to many and a demultiplexer is a logic circuit with one input and many outputs. And by applying control signals, the input signal can be applied to one of the output lines. It is typically like that of a courier. You are living in a flatted complex where you have maybe 10 neighbors including yourself. So a courier guy comes, you make an informed decision that looking at the address of the courier that to which house that particular courier has to deliver the data. So you make or we make via the control signals, we make an informed decision. A typical demultiplexer looks like this and of course the syntax again like for multiplexers it was 16 cross 1 that means 16 data inputs and only out of which one is to be chosen. In this case only one data input and 16 addresses where the data is to be provided. Again the decision is made by the selection lines. In this case again ABCD bus architecture so AA complement, BB complement, CC complement, DD complement and the data as you can see is connected to all the 16 AND gates simultaneously and rest of the ABCD inputs are variable. So whenever we choose one particular combination of ABCD that is in this case for example we choose 1111 then the data would be shown as output of AND gate number 15. Please mind that the first AND gate is marked as AND gate 0, data Y0. So typically for ABCD combination of 1, 1, 1, 1, Y15 will have the data. For input combination, triple zero one 1, Y1 1 will have the data. For input combination ABCD equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, Y0 will have the data. So I think this is pretty obvious that multiplexers and demultiplexers work together complementing each other. So another modification of demultiplexer is a decoder. A decoder is a demultiplexer without any data input. So data input is provided through the decoder by the end user. So more digital systems require decoding of data. It is necessary for data demultiplexing, for data display, digital to analog converters and memory addressing. Decoders are modular in nature again and they can be fixed to perform any of these functions that we just mentioned. So decoder will have again control lines but no data input. The syntax also remains the same as just like demultiplexer. It is also known as 1 of 16 decoder. So internet is again full of these examples. A typical 7 segment decoder is something that we encounter every day lives and hence we need to discuss them. The 7 segment decoder is a display, it is an LCD display generally that we get to see everywhere like for in petrol stations the output panel is actually a decoder. It may be LED decoder or it may be LCD decoder, television is a decoder. Everywhere the calculators that we use are decoders at, since we get to see the data. So again the decoders are of 
two types. They can be common anode or common cathode. This is the hardware portion is what we are discussing and in this case we see that I th we have LEDs here. The LEDs are arranged in the shape of eight numerals and where each of these LEDs has a typical marking. They are denoted by A, B, C, D, E, F and center one is G. In order to display seven, we would require the LEDs A, B, C to glow in order that we have the seven segment indicators or decoders to glow. All of them glow, then we get to see eight. So, we have the common anode connection and we have the common cathode connection. Some of the places depending on current requirements, we have the, we prefer the common anode and some places we prefer the common cathode. So, this is where we stop today and we see that we have seen the functioning of multiplexers, what are multiplexers, what are multiplexer trees, demultiplexers and decoders. Thank you. And have a good day.